I wanted to share about the heart opening and awakening that is occurring with a lot of divine feminines in the collective. This may or may not resonate with you. It may be something that you're in the midst of and something that you're experiencing, or it may be something that you are going to be experiencing in the future. So please take what resonates. I also wanted to say that this video is a kind of a sequel to the previous video that I did on the three lower chakras and how those have been really coming into balance in order to create a new beginning and life shift that really anchors you into the 3D world with more foundation and stability and prosperity and support. So if this video resonates, you may want to check that one out as well because the three lower chakras coming into alignment also really supports the heart in opening. And so I will link that video at the end of this one if you want to check it out. But for this video, I wanted to focus primarily on the heart opening and awakening that is occurring. So when you think of the seven main chakras, the three lower chakras tie us to the physical world of form, and the three higher chakras tie us to the spiritual energetic world, the subtle realm, and the heart chakra is the bridge that connects heaven and earth, the formless and form. And right now there is an awakening happening in the collective that is a byproduct of the purging and the releasing and the healing that has been going on of uh, some very deep core wounds that likely have been following you around for several lifetimes so multiple past lives this is something that is being cleared up in this lifetime and really Past lives are all simultaneous lives because time is really just an illusion. So ultimately, they're all happening now. But that's a side. That's a side. That's a whole nother video. But what I wanted to share is that you may be going through a lot of deep transformative work and alchemy and healing. Um things that have been following you around for several lifetimes and what is important to realize about these core wounds such as abandonment betrayal and dense energies guilt and shame and not feeling good enough and not feeling lovable these core wounds that are tied to traumas, they really um, keep the separate self solidified in your experience. The ego and the separate self, the one that feels separate from all that is, really thrives off of these core woundings. And ultimately, the journey, if you're resonating with the Divine Feminine Collective and this path, you are on a journey to oneness in this lifetime. You're on a journey to unity consciousness. You are here to transcend separation consciousness. And the separate self lives on these core wounds. And so you may have come into this lifetime with a heavy burden of um, core wounds to heal that have not been resolved over many lifetimes and so that's why it may feel very heavy and at times and your path may be you know earmarked by a lot of ego death and dark night of the soul and also you know heartbreak is very common and a lot of people ask about this and this has been part of my experience and so I wanted to share this with you. Most likely 
once you're on this journey consciously, you will have noticed that there are patterns that are persisting and cycles that are persisting in your life. And this can look different for everyone. And the thing is that when your soul is ready to wake up and journeying home to oneness, um, there's no room for you to hide anymore and everything comes to the surface. And these cycles and these patterns are very prominent and very devastating. They cause can often cause a lot of destruction in your life. They can really trigger you at your deep core level, like really trigger deep core wounds that are allowing your separate sense of self to thrive. And the separate self thrives on, you know, this world of duality, which is created in the mind, this dualistic nature, and also thrives on victimhood. And you know, feeling that someone else is doing something to you, you know, so there's always a victim and there's always a, a persecutor or a tyrant. There's, there's both this, um, pendulum swing between these experiences, right? And so, especially if you're resonating as a divine feminine and, and this resonate, this path, you, you really truly are on this path then you're going to be triggered at deep levels of um, abandonment and your own self-sovereignty and really owning your own truth and your voice and really honoring yourself and your heart and what you truly, you know, desire and value. And so life will be showing you circumstances over and over and over again. What needs to be looked at, what needs to be healed, what needs to be transmuted, and what needs to be alchemized in this lifetime. And that can get very uncomfortable, especially if we continue to, and this is, this is key, if you continue to latch on to external factors in your 3D world, whether that be career, money, success, a relationship, something to save you, something to validate you, something to make you feel secure, something to make you feel lovable, something to make you feel worthy, all forms of external validation are really... Um, blowing up probably in your face if you're if you're resonating with this your soul is adamant in you waking up to your divinity in this lifetime and coming into your sacred heart where you are uh, love and abundance and oneness with all things so separate um, transcending separation consciousness which means there's no room for victimhood. There's no room for, you know, pointing the blame, uh, criticizing or judging, or, you know, p- trying to pass off the responsibility for someone else to be a certain way or do a certain thing or a certain situation to be a certain way in order for you to be okay in this lifetime and loved and abundant and safe and secure and all of these things. Because if you look at the patterns, and it's going to be different for everyone, if you go back and look at your patterns and your cycles that are repeating, you're going to see, if you're honest with yourself, where you have been, for example... In cycles of self-abandonment, self-betrayal, not listening to your own intuition, allowing fear to silence your voice, allowing fear to silence your true authentic expression, right? And so any place that the ego, because the ego is rooted in fear, you know, self-doubt, self-criticism, self-judgment, judgment of others, all of this is ego. And any place that the ego 
has been running the show, that's all being brought to the surface now. The ego can no longer run the show in your experience. You are opening on the heart level to fully allow your true divinity to shine through you, which means claiming your divine sovereignty as an expression of unconditional love, oneness, infinite intelligence, God, all that is, whatever you want to call it, spirit. Whatever label you want to put on it is fine. It doesn't really matter. That's not the point. The label doesn't matter. But this is your true essence. This is your true divine nature. It is not the ego. It is not the fear-driven mechanism that is running rampant in your life. It is not the little mind that is rooted in the narrative and in the story, the story of victimhood and the story of blame and the story of shame and, and guilt and unforgiveness and resentment. That is not your de- true nature. That is fear-based illusion that will dissolve as you shine the light of awareness on it and come home to yourself, your true self, your true self, not the self you believe yourself to be, not the self you see in the mirror when you look in the mirror, not the character that you believe your, to yourself to be, not you know, your conditioning or your patterns or any label you assign to yourself, your true self, your true nature, your true divinity, which is the love and the freedom and the peace and the ease and the flow and the abundance and the prosperity. That is your true nature. And you are opening up to this, but there's a lot of dense energies that have been held in your energetic self, right? Especially, you know, in areas of the the lower three chakras and the heart chakra, which is why that other video I mentioned is very important if this one is resonating. There's a lot of denser energies, you know, often related to trauma, often related to these denser, lower emotions. And so as you move on this journey towards oneness and you begin to open energetically to this and your soul is literally calling you to it you're going to experience a purging of these denser energies and oftentimes it's something that really kickstart it like a heartbreak or losing a your job or even maybe sometimes a you know, an unexpected death in the family or something like that traumatic that will trigger trigger this. And oftentimes for a lot of Divine Feminines on the journey, it's, it's deep heartbreak because deep core wounds of abandonment and, and betrayal and not feeling good enough and not being worthy and constantly seeking outside of yourself for validation are all being brought to the surface. So as the the heart begins to open, there is a purging that begins to happen and a release. And it can often sometimes feel like Pandora's box is just being opened. It's almost sometimes like like a volcano that finally starts to erupt because there's been so much stuff that has been repressed or suppressed and so this can often feel like a lot of for example crying crying is very cleansing and there can be a lot of you know n- not a surface level cry like a deep soul cry like deep soul release like deep energetic deeply energetic release that occurs 
This is also a time when you'll experience ego death or dark night of the soul where you'll be guided to go into solitude. This can often make you feel like you're, you're alone in this and that uh, you're on your own in all of this. And, and the solitude is intentional, just like the heartbreak is intentional. Right, just like the devastation, which can look different for everyone, is is intentional. It's it's to guide you inward. It's to get you to finally look at the patterns and look at the karmic cycles that are occurring in your life, and look at the core wounds that finally need to be healed. That the separate sense of self and the victimhood, and all of that are thriving on. And so, this becomes a very lonely journey at times it can feel lonely as you are guided into states periods rather of solitude and these are intentional like i was saying so you can go inward and really connect with yourself this is about really turning your attention away from the world of form and i know that sounds a little paradoxical because while simultaneously you're actually grounding yourself more into the world of form and the physical 3d reality because of the healing that is occurring but your attention is turning inward to finally connect with the emotions and feelings that have been oftentimes repressed and suppressed for a long time and without an outlet and so you may notice a lot of sadness arising. You may notice a lot of anger arising. You may notice a lot of memories coming up to the surface that, you know, get you to look at areas of your life that you may be ashamed about or may feel, you know, you know, feel unworthy because of certain events or things that have occurred. And so any place that you've been you know hiding from yourself from hiding from your shadows has been bubbling up to surface so this is the process of healing the wounded feminine heart and coming home to yourself and this requires really shining the light of awareness on the shadows and being able to sit in the solitude and allow what is ever whatever is surfacing to surface and allow it to be there oftentimes for the first time and you will notice so much uneasiness right unease as this is occurring because it's the last thing your ego wants to do and it's probably something that you've been avoiding for oftentimes your whole life but this can be thoughts memories um, whatever needs to surface but ultimately it's just surfacing so that you can shine the light of awareness on it and and allow it to be there and start to nurture yourself as if you were this innocent little child because ultimately you know that inner part of us that inner child is what is carrying so many of these psychological wounds and so being able to reparent yourself and be there for yourself and be compassionate and understanding and loving with yourself and start to connect the dots on why something happened the way it did and being able to look at it from a higher perspective instead of looking at it from the victim or looking at it from wanting to point blame or anything like that, you're able to start to tap into a deeper truth that allows you to see that you were responding from a wounded place if something if something comes up you know that maybe causes you to self judge for example your job is to bring compassion to that and understand that you 
were acting from a wounded place possibly. You will also be able to look at other people that have, you know, done things to you that your separate sense of self would see as the perpetrator. And you can see that on the deepest level, they were also acting from a wounded place. So if someone, you know, treated you poorly or or caused harm or, you know, whatever... Ultimately, even, you know, any act of, any act of even violence comes from a place of them themselves feeling unlovable. And so while this is really hard to sometimes wrap your head around, especially if the ego is at play, and I just want to have a full disclaimer here that there is, I am not condoning violence in any way. I'm not saying violence isn't okay, and if you are experiencing any kind of violence in your life, then please seek professional help immediately and do whatever you need to do to get yourself into a safe place because I'm not condoning violence. But I do want to, this is subtle, and this may be triggering to hear, especially if your ego is very much attached to being the victim. If you if you have an identity that is attached to being the victim, then anything that threatens that victim identity is going to be very threatening to the ego. So this is very subtle, but necessary to say that on a soul level, we really do call experiences to us. And the reason I'm sharing this is because when you can fully, fully hear what I'm saying here, you can set yourself free. Okay? And this is coming from someone who has experienced heavy trauma. Ranging from domestic violence as a child to narcissistic abuse as an adult. I can say I've I've had my fair share, and so I understand if you're resonating with this, I want to share what has allowed me to set myself free. And before I forget, if this resonates, you may like some of the very first episodes of my podcast, The Calling Uncensored, which you can also find in the playlist section of this YouTube channel. So if this resonates, you might want to go check some of those out. I was just coming up, so I wanted to share that. When you can see that everyone in this physical 3D world is really a soul having a physical experience, everybody, everybody, the people you love, the people you claim to hate, the people that are nice to you and the people that did you wrong, when you can understand and really hear that everyone in your 3D reality is a soul having a physical experience and that we all came here to play certain roles for each other so that we could come into our own experience of our own divinity. And oftentimes in order to come into the experience of our own divinity we have to get so uncomfortable we have to get so deep in the opposite of what we are which causes us to look inward it's the traumas and the heartbreak and the devastation oftentimes which is the trigger, is the catalyst, is the breakthrough that allows us to go inward. And sometimes it takes a lot in the 3D world for us to finally surrender trying to fix everything through external circumstances, through people, through relationships, careers, money, 
fitness, working out, food, addictions, whatever the case may be, whatever the band-aid is that we desperately grasp onto or cling to or chase after to make us feel better in the moment, to avoid having to go inward and really look at ourselves and look at our shadow and look at the places that we have self-abandoned or we have self-betrayed or that we have not listened to our own heart or listen to our own intuition and trusted ourselves, or any place we allowed fear to silence our voice, or any place we've been stuck in a codependent pattern that keeps perpetuating a toxic cycle, whatever the case may be, it's going to look different for everyone. But when you can accept that the souls that are having the physical experience and that we are engaged with in this reality have agreed to play certain roles just like we did in previous lifetimes we've all been the victim and we've all been the villain we've all played these different roles over and over again for each other and so I just wanted to share that because when you are able to move into this space of gratitude Um, which is a process. This is not something that happens overnight, but when you're able to look at the situations in your life as something that your soul has called to you in order to come into union with your true self, with your divinity, you're able to release the edge that is there, the resentment, the the anger and the sadness and you're able to start to see how beautiful this journey is with all of its pitfalls with all of its dramas and its traumas and its struggles and this is part of the process and so you'll notice that on this during this heart awakening that you may have judgment come up for others and for yourself and the ego's language is judgment the ego's language is blame the ego's language is victimhood and the ego loves to run away from its shadows or numb out to them through coping mechanisms Maybe staying busy all the time so you don't go inward. Maybe addictions. Maybe things like binge watching television instead of taking some time to sit in the solitude and the silence. Finding ways to get out of the quiet time so you can stay busy all the time doing something. The secret is in the silence. The secret is in the silence and the secret is in the solitude. The solitude is your gateway into your sacred heart into healing your feminine heart and fully coming into alignment with your divine nature no more self-abandonment no more self-betrayal no more justifications no more people pleasing no more over giving no more codependency no more making excuses no more And also no more blaming. No more pointing the finger. Taking that mirror and putting it on yourself and turning all your focus and all your conscious awareness back on you and back in your heart and allowing whatever surfaces to come up and surface. And again, sometimes it can feel like you just open Pandora's box and you can be a hot mess for months crying uncontrollably find a place to let it out find a safe space to let it out and sit with it and f- ask what what is what am what am i feeling what is the feeling underneath this so we often try to run from the feelings that start to come up you'll notice if there's memories or situations that are coming up there's feelings underneath that that we want to try to avoid because they don't feel good and they don't feel safe. 
And so the feelings that don't feel good is what the ego is trying to protect you from, but it's also what keeps you running from yourself and chasing something else out t- externally outside of yourself for that validation, for that safety, for that security, for that approval, or for, for that love. And as long as you're still chasing, you're ultimately just running from yourself. And as long as you're running from yourself, the cycle repeats. Life is always reflecting back to you exactly what you need for your awakening because you are life itself. You are not separate. Everything you see in your 3D world is energy. What does that mean when you really think of it? What does that mean? It means that nothing is separate. It's energy that's also appearing as solid world of form simultaneously. So life can't do anything but reflect back to you exactly what you need for your awakening Because you are everything. You are energy. You are connected to everything. This is why your path is lined with synchronicities. Because synchronicity is the language of oneness. You are that which you seek. You are the love that you seek. You are the safety and the abundance and the prosperity that you seek. You may have heard ancient mystics say things like this. You may have read quotes about this, but this is the journey for you to experience it yourself and come into oneness with all that is. So you are not alone, even though this journey can sometimes feel lonely. You are actually the opposite of alone because you are one with all of creation. The solitude is there to guide you home. So embrace it and allow yourself to fully connect with the parts of yourself that you've been running from this whole time. And as you do this, the ego will lose its footing and begin to dissolve. And you will begin to live more from your heart space and live as this love. You will begin to notice that your energy is shifting and then you'll begin to see the outer effects in the 3D world shift. As you begin to see through the eyes of love and through the eyes of your sacred heart instead of through the eyes of your ego, the eyes of duality. So I hope this message finds you well and until next time, namaste.